there are no questions on anything. I forgot to ask. Are there any questions on anything? Not from you three in here, okay. Uh, anyone online, are there any questions about anything before we begin? Okay, take that as a note. So <clears throat> here we are, 6.1. Uh, this is trig functions, the right triangle approach. Um, I picked a lot of questions from this. I picked nine questions. Um, just because I think they're rather quick. And, and so number six, uh, the first one. In number six, we're going to be converting angles from degrees to radians, and then in a few questions, we're going in the other direction. Um, so just to refresh your memories, an angle is formed by two rays, both of them coming from some point. This is the angle in between them. Um, there's two ways to describe this angle. Um, there's something called radians, which has to deal with this length, right? It's, it's how long that is in terms of the radius of the circle. And then there's this thing, these things called degrees. Um, and, and they both describe angles. Uh, degrees, kind of arbitrarily, but I'll point time the circle. 360 of these things, and then, yeah, so imagine 360 slice pi here. Uh, it just measures how many of those slices you've got from the circle. In order to convert back and forth, there's a pretty simple multiplication procedure, and the key idea is that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. This is the key ingredient to it. Um, so if you know an angle in radians and you want to turn it into degrees, what you do is you multiply by 180 degrees divided by pi. If it's in radians, the radians in a sense will cancel out with this pi, kind of, in a sense, and then you'll be left with degrees. If you start with something in degrees and you want to go to radians, you multiply by 180 using I over 180 degrees. It's a really simple translation um, back and forth between the two. Just the other day, my daughter asked me, she's four now, she asked me, Daddy, does two ever equal one? And I said, Of course, honey. Of course, it always equals one. When you're talking about certain things, you know, two halves of a cookie equal one cookie. Of course, honey, right? I mean, it seems weird to say that pi equals 180. That's, that's ridiculous. But it does. We're talking about pi radians and 180 degrees. Of course, you can have different things equaling, different numbers equaling each other, as long as the context is obvious. Usually, that comes from units. So, number six, find this angle, 36 degrees in radians. Number eight, Find this angle in degrees in radians. 20 and 22, we're going to go the other way. We've got term negative 3 pi over 2 and in radians into degrees. And 22, turn this angle, negative 2, into an angle in degrees. So two sides of the coin here. Change these to radians. Change these to degrees. And it all comes down to just these multiplication factors. 36 degrees, we're here. We want to go this way. So follow the arrow. We're just going to multiply by pi over 180. And that's your answer. You can simplify it if you want, but there it is. It's, it's really that easy. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if what design requires you to simplify things. Certainly, your high school and grade school teachers require you to simplify things, certainly. So, you know, you could, like, divide both these things by 18 and you get 2 over 10, right? So, one fifth, pi over 5. You could do things like that, but there you go. Okay. Um, 
um, 75 degrees. Really hard problem. Let's see, right here, we want to go up there, so we multiply by pi over 180. And, like before, there you go, there it is. That's the answer. We could simplify this, find everything by 5, it looks like. Um, hmm, 90, 45. So that's like, well, I don't even know. That's what it is. Divide by 5 on top and bottom and see if we can find more things, which we can. They're both visible by 3. Uh, we divide by 15 on top and bottom, we'll have our answer. Okay, simplify it. Questions on that? Okay. It's pretty simple, and this is just a simple. Um, one thing to keep in mind, and this is the trickier one, is that you don't have to have a pi for it to be radians. This is negative two radians, even though there's no pi. Okay, um, that can be used from time to time. Because typically when you do these problems, right here, it's a good example, there is a pi, and it nicely cancels out with what you multiply by. So here we've got radians. We want to go down to degrees, so we multiply by 180 degrees over pi. And if we took the time to do this, we'd see that the pi's cancel. And what you're left with is a number, right? Negative 270 degrees. No pi left over. Just a number of degrees. In this one, that doesn't happen. So you're literally left with this negative 360 over pi degrees. Yeah. That's it. What you did? Did you see my email? Wow. Wow. Well, you know, I, let me ask people online. Is this angle working for you online? I don't know if they care. You know what? Thank you so much, though. That's really awesome. Wow. Um, a thousand extra credit points right there. Literally a thousand extra credit points. Extra credit points mean nothing in this class, but they make my heart happy. Thank you so much. That's really great. That really is. Thank you. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm trapped. I don't even know what I was thinking about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So over here, you know, our two results had pi in them. The degrees cancel out. We're left with pi, and we have the radians measured now. Here. Uh, it's kind of odd. We've still got pi in there. That's okay. It's just a number. It's this number of degrees. 360 over 3.4-ish. Okay? So don't let that trip you up. That is four quick and dirty questions. Uh, 32 is the next one I selected. Um, 32. Um, says, measure an angle in standard position is given, find two positive angles and two negative angles that are co-terminal with the given angle. So 32 is 11 and 5 over 6. Um, and I'm going to already draw down number 40 as well. Number 40 asks if two angles are co-terminal. So co-terminal, co-terminal, what does that mean? First, let's find these angles. And then it'll be pretty, pretty apparent for question 40. The 11 pi over 6, that's, that's pi over 6. Of two pi, right? It's just a little bit short of twelve pi over six. So that is it's right here. Okay. 
So it's, it's almost all the way around the circle. Coterminal means they have the same ending location. So this one starts here, goes all the way around, and ends here. It's the terminal point. So let's think of two positive angles that have the same coterminal. Twenty-two pi over six. Twenty-two pi over six. Ooh, that's that's really close. So that is three short of four pi. Right. So it's actually right about. Really close. How about 23 pi over 6? Yeah, there we go. So, what he did was he took this angle and he added 2 pi, which is 12 pi over 6. And that is guaranteed to give you a full term one. There's one. What's another? Oh, we can do that again. Done. The first angle is that one. The second one is that one. We just go around the circle again. Um, your answers could be unique, right? For me, they don't have to see these three. Like five or six plus that. You can totally have, you know, plus any multiple of two uh, by and then and you have a full term. Let's go around the circle n times and we're good. How about negative coterminal angles? Well, this is one of them. It's pi over six short of two pi, so negative pi over six is one of them. We go in the opposite direction, right? That much. So we come this way, negative pi over six. And then what do we do? Well, we do the exact same process. But instead of adding two pi, we're going to subtract two pi. And we've got another coterminal angle in the negative direction. So in pictures three or eight, the first angle is this, the next one is keep going all the way around. The next one is keep going all the way around. The first coterminal angle in the other direction was going backwards that way. The next one is go around this way again. You're on the opposite direction all the way. So uh, all the way around. Okay. So now 50 degrees and 340 degrees, are they coterminal? They have the same ending spot. Definitely not. Definitely not. They're both positive. That's one, right? One didn't know. So if these are coterminal, one of them has to be bigger than 360 degrees. If this one is smaller than 360, right? This, this is smaller than 360. So we haven't even gone all the way around the circle once. So they can't be coterminal. I don't, don't even need to graph. But here's 50 degrees ish. Kind of just sort of 60 degrees. 340 is 20 degrees less than all the way around. So it's like right here. Definitely not coterminal. Okay, questions on these? Pretty simple, straightforward questions, I think. But we need to sort out those questions. Yeah. <coughs> right. 54. Um, find the length of the circular. 
radius r of the circle towards the center. Circle. We're given a central angle. A central angle is just one that starts in the middle, it has the, the coordinates at the point. Here's our angle, 140 degrees, and here's our radius 5. It's asking for this length. So, what is that length? Write down the next one, 55. Similar. We're given a central angle of two radians. And what's the state? We're being asked for a bar. The radius. And this is 56. These two kind of fit together, um, same kind of question, but they're just in terms of perspective of the same thing. Um, so what is S? What is this argument? How can we figure this out? Any ideas? Yeah. Subtract it from 140. Okay, that's a good idea. So first off, this, this is 140 degrees. So this is 220 degrees, okay? Is the arc length 220 degrees? No. See, that's a key difference between radians and degrees. If I knew this in radians, because I know the radius, I would immediately be able to compute this. In fact, if this were the unit circle, and if I knew this in radians, this is that. That's why radians are so cool. They are literally the length of this circle, circle's arc. That's what they are. But, unfortunately, degrees aren't. So, how do we figure this out? 220 is good. Let's convert it to radians. Yeah, uh, this is a really, a really interesting thing. Okay, this is it in radians now. I'm going to look at it a different way here for a second. Put a 2 here and make this 360. Right, all the way around the circle is 360 degrees. So this is the same conversion factor. Just multiply it on top and bottom by that. And then I'm going to rewrite it. Okay. This here is the fraction of the circle that this arc length traces out. Right? So it's, it's, it's in a sense the, the amount of the circle, the circumference we've traversed, we've gone over. And what is the circumference of the circle? Two pi r. Right? We take the whole circumference And we multiply it by this fraction of the circle that we've gone around. And we get our result. And all that comes from is the radians times the radius. Radians literally means this many radii. That's what the, the radian, a radian, Is a count of radii. You've got two radians 
That means this radius, one, two, are right there on the arc. What's the radius? Four. That's what a radian tells you. Radians, just to look back here, we convert our angle to radians, which is a count of how many radii we've gone around the circle. We multiply that by the length of a radius, and we get the total length. Here we've got the total length, eight, and it equals the number of radians times the size of the radius. Eight is two radii, so one radii is four. I love radians, they're so cool. They're just, I think they're so much better than degrees for this reason. But for whatever reason, they're hardly taught to young students. They just have these really nice features to them, things like this that are really intuitive. Um, so that was what, 50? Four and fifty-six. So sixty-three is the last one in the section. Find the area of the sector shown in each figure. I'll just do part A. The next one's rather simple. Eighty-three is simple. The radius is eight, and the central angle is eighty degrees. We want to find the area of this sector. Now we can approach it just like the one on the left over there. This is a fraction of the total area. Total area is pi r squared, which is 64 pi. Okay, so we're going to take a fraction of that. We're going to take 80 over 360. It's 360 degrees. We've only got 80 of them. We multiply that by 64. Pi. There you go. Okay. Um, yep. But we, well, we just did, didn't we? Remember, this process of sort of figuring out the fraction of the circle and then multiplying by the radius, this is the conversion. Let's do it the other way and see. He's absolutely right. 80 times 2y over 360. Rewrite this as I go. 80. Two, somewhere in here, over 360. We're pretty close, aren't we? There's a, there's a relationship here now between the R squared and what we've got. So this is the angle and radius. Right? So we'll just rewrote it here. Um, that's the moment this is going to Then, when we know that angle and radius, how do we find out the, <clears throat> the area? So, area of a sector is half r squared theta. So, if we've got our angle theta in radians, which is what we have here now, in order to get the area, we multiply by a half, so there's this, and we multiply by r squared. There it is. So, I don't think there's a, a right way or a wrong way to do this. Your book distills for you, it tells you this nice formula. 
for computing. The area of the sector if you know what the angle of radius. If you're giving it in degrees, you're probably either going to have that memorized and you're going to convert to radians first and then use the formula. Or you're going to reason through it. You're going to say, I have this fraction of the circle, which has this total area. There's my answer. They're exactly the same. Okay. And that's, that's, um, it's not a coincidence. Remember the, the translation between degrees and radians is related. It's tied to the circle itself. So it's not a coincidence that these are the same. Uh, you saw me have to go look at that book for that formula. I don't have it memorized. I always go through the reasoning process <laughs> because it's that quick, right? Um, questions on six. This is where we get into like the meat of what they wanted to do in this chapter. They wanted to talk to you about uh, trig functions in terms of triangles instead of trig functions in terms of circles. If you can find two mathematicians who disagree on which one's better, you should put them in a room and just listen. Let them talk about it. Because it's really, it can get pretty heated. I know because I've been a part of those conversations funny because it's so, so weird, like triangles, circles, you know, but it, it, it happens, right? Especially during this time. So here we've got a right triangle. This is the angle that they want you to find the exact values of the six trig functions for here are the sides of that right triangle. So they want six trig functions, sine of theta, cosine of theta, bisine of theta, and then the reciprocal function. We've got cosecant, and then cosecant. Uh, pretty quick process here. I always, used to, I always told you that the sine and the cosine are like the x and the y, sorry, and the x coordinates of things. Um, but that's only if you're working on the unit circle. So now what we need to, to worry about is uh, we're not in the unit circle anymore. But fortunately, there's a pretty easy fix for this. Um, just because I know we're going to need it, uh, I'm going to compute this. It's the square root of 15 squared, 225 plus 8 squared, which is 64. And I don't know the square root of 289, I don't think. Or 13. No. No, it has to be big. Is it 17? It's 17. It is 17. We're good. This is 17. Nice. Put the Pythagorean triple there. 8, 15, 17. Okay, well, um, the six trip functions can easily be determined once you know all the sides of a right turn. Easily. Um, there's this catchy phrase for sine, cosine, and tangent called uh, Sokotoa. And then it's lesser known French equivalent for the reciprocal identities, which is Chosha uh, Chow, which is cosecant, pecan, cosine. 
called chat. It's French. French for just means nothing. Um, but that's the reciprocal one. So what do these mean? Uh, sine is always the opposite leg divided by the hypotenuse. So here in this triangle, here's our angle. The opposite leg is 15. The hypotenuse. So the sine of this angle is 15 plus 17. Cosine is the adjacent leg divided by the hypotenuse. So here's our angle. The adjacent leg is 8 divided by 17. Tangent is the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. So opposite over adjacent. This is 15. So could tell it just helps you remember those things. Um, it's, it's a pretty strange statement. So could So could in what? You know, like water? I mean, this is even weirder. Um, so maybe that just helps you remember them. But they're just the initializations to help you remember what, what they are. So cho sha cha now. Cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. 17 over 15. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. And cotan is adjacent over opposite. Or the reciprocals of these three things. Easy, yeah. Forget the French. All right. Sixteen is the next one to choose from the bottom two. Uh, find the side label X. This is where you need to remember some things that you learned last time in the last chapter. So we know a trig function that relates the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Which one of them does that? Relates the opposite to the yes sign. Sine of 45 degrees equals to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. This is just a number, right? Just a number. So A equals 12 over X. Let's solve for X. Just multiply both sides by it and then divide by A. A is not zero, right? Sine of 45, that's pi over 4. That should be two over 2. Not zero, so we can divide by it. So we get x equals 12 over A. Oh, Whatever that number is. Okay. That's 12 root 2 over 2. There's 16. Nice application of using trig functions. 22, similar. Um, we're going to look at this triangle. Look at this, and uh, we're going to try and describe y and x um, in terms of in terms of trig ratios of theta. So what I'm trying to say here is I know, I know the tangent of this angle, whatever it is, 
equal to opposite over adjacent, which means that if I multiply both sides by 4, x is just 4 in theta. So if I knew theta, I could determine x really quickly. To determine y in terms of theta, uh, we're going to use a different one. Uh, we're going to use cosine. Cosine of theta is the adjacent side or over the hypotenuse y. And we're going to solve it just like we did here for y this time. Multiplying both sides by y and y by cosine. New theta, that's what y would be. So we've now determined x and y in terms of theta. Questions about that? Okay. Three more from this section. Evaluate the expression without using the calculator. Um, if you were sort of crossing your fingers last chapter, thinking, I hope I don't have to memorize these, these trig values, if you were crossing your fingers until after that test. Well, keep them crossed. Or uncross them and start doing those tables. If it's more fun, we'll have these things memorized. Um, so if you evaluate the expression without using the calculator, I also take 30. Because sine of 30 degrees times cosine. Sine of pi over 6, cosine of pi over 6. What are these things numerically? Remember them. In the right order as well. Yeah. Yeah. So there, that's your answer. You can identify it by having one numerator, one denominator. That's it. That's the exact value. One plus radical three over two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how does this relate to triangles? Well, I have this triangle that I drew on half with return to that's the triangle approach, which is something that I did last time. 30. Don't think too hard about this one. What do you mean it is the same thing? Yes, but Daniel, do you see a trick? It's one, absolutely one. Sine and cosecant are reciprocal to each other, right? So whatever this is, this is one over that. Done. Yeah. So yeah, if you're still crossing your fingers thinking, I hope I don't have to memorize these things, you might not have to all the time. <laughs> if you can remember other things. Thank you.
one more question in this section for you. This was, I, I put this question down just because um, I wanted to talk about what this means. Not so much that I wanted to do this question. So the instructions for this question say solve the triangle. As if it was a problem that needed solving. Solve it. That's pretty vague. Solve. Uh, it really would have behoove them to explain what this means. What they what they're trying to say is find every missing angle and every side length. Okay. Not that much longer. They should just write that. But I don't know why. This is just this is like a common thing in the states to say salt, and it means literally to say everything you can about it. But it's really ambiguous too because how far do they want you to go? They want you to say the area, the perimeter. Like what do they want you to say? What extra information? Right? So this is what you're supposed to do with this question, and, and there you have it. So to solve. right angles, it's 90. This is 22. These two need to add up to 90. So there's that angle. Um, hypotenuse is 1,000. So we need to find one of these other legs, that, and then we're basically done. So let's go for this leg. Um, let's see. Opposite over hypotenuse is sine. Sine is 68 degrees. Don't know what that is, but it's this height, y, over a thousand. So y, this length, is a thousand times sine of 68 degrees. Y. So what is the other one down there? Well, the Pythagorean theorem will tell us. Square root of thousand squared minus thousand squared sine squared sixty eight degrees. Okay, done. Okay. You can either use the Pythagorean theorem or you can use cosine. Cosine of sixty eight, we call this x. X over thousand, cosine of sixty eight degrees. Meaning that it's thousand. Solving means to find everything about it. There it is. Once you you know once you know how to do this sine cosine business, solving the triangle is pretty monotonous. You just do the same thing over and over. Um, that's it for 6.2. Any questions on things we just talked about in that section? 6.2. Dana's going to fall asleep. It's too easy. Too easy. Too easy. Right. Number nine. Um, I selected this one just because we've done this before. Find the reference angle. What's the reference angle? Right, this was on the test. This is like we didn't know before. Here we go. Here we go. 
reference angle is always the angle formed between that terminal point and the x-axis. Right? Okay. So you can graphically see it. Uh, we're going to split a pi, so halfway around in 10 equal parts. So pi here. And then we're going to go set of them. Set them by over 10. What's the reference angle? 3 pi over 10, right? Okay, how could we have seen that before even drawing it out? The x axis is always at an angle of pi times some multiple. It's always at one of those things. So the process of finding reference angles is looking for the multiple of pi that is closest to this and then taking the difference. This is really close to one pi. Right? So we'll take pi, which is 10 pi. 10 pi over 10, excuse me, minus that 7 pi. We find the multiple of pi that's closest to it, just subtract. If you accidentally subtract in the wrong order and get a negative sign, just drop it, and it's still fine. Okay, 9b was 9 pi over 8. Find the reference sign. That's awfully close to 9 pi over 9 or 8 pi over 8, which is pi. So let's just subtract 8 pi over 8, and we get pi over 8. There it is. C. 10 pi over 3. Now things are a little trickier. But not so not so much. Three pi over three is pi. Six pi over three is two pi. Nine pi over three is three pi. That's close to this. If we go another one, we're going to get twelve pi over three, which is actually two over that. Okay, so we're going to just go with this. One. I'm listing out the multiple pi. Again, again, let's go further. And I'm looking at which of these is closest. This one's seven away, four away, one away, two away. So it's clearly this one. So subtract and then you've got the reference on. Okay, so that was question nine. Um, I skipped way far down the road. Um, so write the first trigonometric function in terms of the second given the problem. So we want to say cosine of theta equals some, some expression of a sign. We want to write the first trig function in terms of the second in the given quadrant. So this comes down to triangles again, or your knowledge of what these things are. So we've got some angle down here in quadrant four. Quadrant four is right now. We've got one, two, three. We've got some angle down here. 
Now the cosine tells us the x coordinate. Sine tells us the y coordinate of that terminal point. If we're working in the unit circle. But we also have a triangle here. And if we're working in the circle, we know that this radius is 1. So, we hopefully can remember the diagram theorem to say that x squared plus y squared in any triangle, the square of one leg plus the square of the other leg is equal to, in any right triangle, the hypotenuse squared. We're pretty much there. Now we just need to plug in what these things are. Cosine squared is x squared plus sine squared, which is y squared. Um, this is called the Pythagorean identity. It has its own name, the Pythagorean identity. Um, we basically have it here. We just need to subtract sine squared over and then square root both sides. So this expression is square root of 1 minus sine squared theta with a negative sine term because we're in quadrant 4. When you take this square root, you hopefully remember that there's always this plus or minus there. You get two things squared, you square root both sides, you got plus and or minus. These correspond to this triangle, which has the same x but a positive height, and this triangle, which has the same x but a negative x. Positive triangle and the negative triangle. We are in quadrant four, so we want the negative triangle, the negative height. There's what we created. Yeah, okay. Okay, next one I think was fifty. Gives us the cotangent of some of them. Negative eight nine. And we're also told cosine of the same angle. Opposite. And they want to know the values of every other trig function. Ideas. Go.
cotangent. That's the reciprocal of tangent. Yep. yep. All the trig function values. We're given cotangent, and we want to know what is sine, cosine, uh, tangent. Secants, cosecants, and we're already full. This is what we want to know. Everyone. Yeah, tangent sees you. What is it? Nine over eight with an A. Reciprocal of cotangent, so split the fraction. Yeah. Uh, we could draw a triangle with one side and negative eight, and the other side nine. We all know that. Yeah, this is exactly it. So this is telling us two two pieces of information about a triangle that has this angle in it. Cho Sha Chow, cotangent, C A O, is adjacent side over opposite side. So let's just draw a triangle, and I'm going to draw it suggestively. Okay. So it says this is our angle, the opposite side over the adjacent side, negative 8. Going down, positive nine because it's going over. Uh, I just gave you this triangle and said, what's the cotangent of this? Oh, excuse me. Did I? I made a mistake here. Adjacent side. That's how you fix it right there. There's our angle. Adjacent side over opposite side. If I give you that angle and ask you for the cotangent with this triangle, you say it's negative eight over nine. How do we know which is the adjacent and which is the opposite? Well, it has to deal with so hypotenuse is never one of the legs. So the adjacent side is the one that is formed by this leg and the hypotenuse. Yes, so this is a great question. So let me write this. Cotangent of this angle is the negative 8 over 9. Cotangent of this angle is 9 over negative 8. The adjacency switches. This side is adjacent to this angle. This side is adjacent to this one. Next to, it's right next to it. So I wrote this down wrong to begin with. I wrote fake here. I should have written it there. I caused that. Sorry. Does this make sense though? Okay. All right. Yes, yeah, so we've got this nice right triangle. Um, and now we can have also the tangent there. The tangent is opposite over adjacent. Nine over negative eight. So there it is. Uh, right, right. We just need to know the hypotenuse now, and we can determine really quickly everything else. So, that great theorem. Here we go. Uh, nine squared, negative eight squared. That is one forty-five. So, whatever the square of one forty-five is, that's not a perfect square. One hundred forty-four is. 12 squared. That's one more. So it's not a perfect square. Um, that's an interesting question. No, it's not interesting. 
Great question. Do you have to worry about that when finding this? That's why I said I was going to write it suggestively. <clears throat> so I put it going down because it's negative. <clears throat> um, I also know that the cosine of this angle is positive, which means if I were to put a circle around this, here's the y axis, here's the x axis, we're in quadrant four. So we've got the hypotenuse here, root 145. Now let's find the doubles. Sign is opposite over hypotenuse. Nine over root 145. I might have to sort something out here, I might have a mistake. We'll keep going. The numbers are right, the signs might be wrong. Cosine of this angle is adjacent over root 145. And this is why no, I made a mistake. Cosine is positive. So now that we've got those three, let's sort this out. Mm. So I drew this, I drew this triangle initially, thinking, oh, here's the eight, here's the nine. And you see, I kind of came down to this, this conclusion in the end that cosine must have been negative. But <clears throat> initially I wanted to put my angle here, right? And that forced me to put these things sort of in that way. I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna reverse the angle back up to here, and I'm gonna switch the sides. Okay, the cosine of our angle is positive, so I know I'm working in quadrants one, four, four. That means this has to be positive to the right. And this one has to be negative. But from the beginning, I didn't know which one, eight or nine, needed to be negative or positive. Now that I'm coming down to writing these out, I notice I switched the order. So I'm just gonna go back and change them again. So this theta, this is positive 8. This is negative 9. The hypotenuse doesn't change. Everything still stays the same. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Cotangent is adjacent over opposite. Those, those are the same. The sine of this is opposite over hypotenuse, which I have now. Cosine, which is positive now, adjacent over hypotenuse. Done. Cosine. This can be the reciprocal of sine, root 145 over 9, negative sine, and you see the reciprocal of this one, root 145 over 8. Okay. We're done. So these problems are interesting. If you can think like four or five steps in advance, unlike what I did, you won't make any mistakes. You'll think to yourself, hey, Four steps down the road, I need to remember cosine's positive. So we're going to put the eight here and the negative nine there. I was just, you know, woohoo, let's do this. Angle, angle, nine, negative eight. That didn't work. But if you come up with those contradictions, the sign, those are really easy to change, right? Just flip, flip the signs. So long as you've got side lengths label these because that's what this tells you it's okay you'll, you'll sort out your sign mistake sooner or later um, i wrote it this way with a negative eight and negative nine that's what it should have been so it's an easy mistake to make easy mistake to fix questions on that before we move on I 
broke down one more of these, but now I have three. So <laughs> let's see if we can do it without making a mistake. 54. We're told the tangent of some angle is 4. And we're told the sine of negative 4. That's going to mess me up. The sine of the right angle is positive. Okay, so now let's think about this a couple of steps in advance. Sine is positive, which means our triangle that we're going to draw is somewhere up here. Importantly, the tangent is negative, which means it's not in quadrant one, it's in quadrant two. Okay, so we can just sort of keep going through this. We're not up there on the right, we're not down there below. So over here on the left. Now tangent is negative four. So let's just this is our angle. We know the y is going to be positive, and the x is negative. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. This is negative four. This is one. Uh, wow. Opposite over adjacent. So negative one plus four. Wow. I told you. I told you. Negative sign from this one. There we go. Done. Okay. Now it's simple, simple curve. Find the hypotenuse, find all the other trig lines. Square five. One square plus four squared is minus five. Seventeen. Let me go from there. Sign of our angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is full. Cosine. Just pull that. Now we can write this down. Secant is this. And cosine. And we've satisfied that sine is positive and tangent is negative four, so there we go. Okay. So go slowly, don't rush, and most certainly don't do it in front of other people. You will make mistakes. Okay. I think that's all I have for you today. Um, 909. Uh, do you have questions? Have you already worked on some of this homework? Do you want to see a problem done in particular? We've got about 10 minutes left. Uh, people online, do you have any questions on any types of problem you, you've seen in the homework?
So we've got a hill, person standing and looking. Now here's horizontal, here's the black pole. Here we've got two different angles. We've got 14 degrees, degrees. We want to know x, how far away she is from the flag. Okay. Oh, she knows it's 60 feet. Didn't you say that? That's yeah, 60 feet. I'm thinking to myself, I don't think we can see this far. Okay. I don't know. My picture's not drawn to scale. It says 14 and 18. Yeah, one of these lights is longer, for sure. Yeah. Here's a hill. Does it matter? I don't think so. We're going to sort that out eventually. Thoughts. To me, I'm like, we don't know what this is, we don't know what this is, but whatever this is, H, we know this is 60 minus H. Right? So to me, I think, hey, tangent of 14 degrees, which is just some number I can find out on a calculator, is equal to the opposite over adjacent. And to me, when I look at this, I think, well, the tangent of 18 degrees is opposite to H over X. Now, I don't know about you, but I see two equations and two unknowns, and that I like. That's nice. So with this, all I've done is I've taken the two triangles, this leg is 60 minus h, where h is the height of this triangle. They both share a leg x. So I use the tangent of these angles to relate the height to the leg. The height to the leg. I get these two equations, and it's just plug and solve now. So I'm going to multiply this by x to give me that h is x times tan 18. Let me plug that in over there. Right, this. Plug it in right there. So, let's go. Tan 14 is 60 minus x tan 18. Multiply that left side by x, right side by x, we hope it's not zero. Bring this over to the, the left side and back out to x. Divide by the sum, and we've got our result. That the key thing here is just, yeah, this doesn't look solvable, right? It doesn't look solvable, but um, if you relate the sides of the triangle with the trig function, you can essentially create, I mean, we could have created lots of expressions. We could have created 12 expressions here, six. Six trig functions for each triangle. We would have 12 equations 
with three unknowns, because we don't know this one, and we don't know this one. But we could have created 12 equations with three unknowns. If you remember back from high school, having more equations than you do unknowns is usually a good thing. Usually. So, chances are good that you can solve it. Um, I just picked the two that are nice. These are the only two you need. And then it's, it's a little out of fun. This is a fascinating uh, thing because, you know, if we just made some sort of like standardized thing and put it around the interstates with like a, an Xbox Connect, as it drove around, it could be looking at the angles between the top and the bottom of these things that are standing around everywhere. And if it knows those standard things, the Connect could basically say, I'm only a thousand feet from that. I need to move a little left in the car while I'm driving. <laughs> See what I mean? Like a little camera that does a little bit of math, it, it can easily determine where it's located. This is called triangulation. You've probably heard that in movies. 